All right. Thank you all. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today. This is the Blackboard 2 Building Your Blackboard Course Workshop. My name is Peter Goen. I am the Online Analytics Coordinator here at Faculty Development. Uh, if you ever have any Blackboard or Teaching with Technology questions, feel free to contact me at my email or directly on my office line. Uh, I'd be happy to help anytime. Okay, so today's workshop is a follow-up to Blackboard 1. Blackboard 1 was a really basic introduction to Blackboard, just so you could get an overview of its features, learn how to access it, learn how to use uh, some of the communication and assessment tools from both a student perspective, if you hadn't seen that before, and an instructor's perspective to be able to set some of those things up, tweak some of the settings, uh, just familiarize yourself with what's available within Blackboard as well as some of the uh, nitty gritty of being able to work with, with Blackboard as an instructor, uh, being able to request your courses or shells for development environment so that you can begin setting them up. And then once you have everything set up, making those available to your students within the Blackboard system. So today, we'll be talking about a little bit of follow up to that. We'll go over uh, how you might want to set up and structure your courses, look at some of the uh, nice to have features of that, as well as a few best practices. And then uh, once we're done, I'll try to answer any questions you might have within Blackboard, because I certainly won't be able to cover everything today, but there might be a few things that you'd like to know about later on. While I am talking, though, if you have a question about anything I'm addressing, feel free. Uh, type something in the chat, uh, raise your hand, ask a question over audio. I'd love to answer those while in progress. Okay, so jumping right into today's lecture, talking about uh, setting up your Blackboard courses, you initially want to think about, just like you would for your face-to-face -face courses, what your purpose is for it what the content is, how you're going to cover it, uh, what are your learning objectives, how are you going to assess on those, that kind of thing. Once you have covered those then, and you figured out, okay, I also want to do something within Blackboard, figuring out where Blackboard fits within your overall course design and course structure is what you'll then have to begin addressing. There are a whole bunch of different things that Blackboard can do for you, uh, you could just post some course information. For instance, if you have a syllabus or you wanted to let your students know what textbook, books, journals they'll have to um, pick up on their own or find a library, posting that information there is great, giving them a little bit of extra help. Of course, you'll probably also have a syllabus if you have a face-to-face -face course that you've handed out to them, but posting that syllabus as well as some of the other relevant information within Blackboard is always a good idea. The more information you give your students, the fewer emails you'll get uh, asking you about different aspects of your course. Thinking through other things though, uh, if you are receiving assignments, there are a number of ways to uh, have your students submit si assignments to you within Blackboard. Uh, whether they're Word documents or pictures or different kinds of files, posting video or audio, all of those kinds of things are available to you within Blackboard. A common thing that students ask for is uh, posting their grades within Blackboard so that they always have quick access to know how well they're doing. So if that's something that you're interested in, know that all those features are available to you. Uh, that's something we could address later on. Collaboration, especially if you're teaching an online course, there are a number of tools for your students to collaborate amongst themselves through discussion boards, or as we're doing today, through a Blackboard Collaborate session. But that's just a uh, quick smattering of different kinds of things you can do within Blackboard. There are a number of different features as well. Uh, it's, it all comes down to your purposes for your own class, different kinds of things you're trying to cover and then figuring out whether or not Blackboard will uh, give you access to being able to do those kinds of things, simpler, online, etc. Okay, so I'm going to be harping on this the entire time. How do you plan on structuring your course? Now, if you're already getting into course design, you've probably begun structuring some of that in your syllabus. Thinking about how you reflect that online as well is the trick. 
and I'll show you two different ways that you can go through uh, Blackboard and develop some of that structure for your course within this online environment to reflect what you've already considered and probably written into your syllabus or other help that you've given your students. Things to think about when you're uh, thinking through uh, the structure of your course, obviously what your learning objectives are, how you're going to assess based on that, thinking about what you're going to require of your students, and then figuring out whether or not that's capable within Blackboard. And most of the common routine tasks, as well as a few more advanced features, um, completely possible within Blackboard. But as uh, on top of just what you're going to require, also think about any optional activities you might have. Are there any extra credit assignments? Are there certain things that uh, you want your students to complete within a particular time period? Uh, there are different ways of implementing all of those kinds of things within Blackboard, and I'll show you a few of them. It all comes down to, as an instructor again, how do you want to and plan to utilize Blackboard? All right. So, I'm going to jump right in, and I'll show you uh, how we begin structuring some of that and a few of the uh, fun features that might save you a little bit of time within Blackboard. So I'm going to begin within Blackboard Collaborate here, what's known as an application share. I'm actually going to show you uh, Blackboard itself from my own computer. So I'm going to open up Firefox here, which is my browser of choice. They all work within Blackboard, but uh, Firefox is one of the more common ones that we recommend to people. Okay. So if you can see my screen, go ahead and give me a green check mark. I want to make sure everyone's actually uh, able to see this right now. Sometimes it can take a minute to load. Okay, good. Excellent. Everyone's already in there and seeing a few things. Okay. Well, uh, one utility that I'd like to point out, sometimes when you're building out your course, as an instructor, obviously, you see everything uh, within your own course, but your students might not be able to see all the stuff that you're building out. Sometimes that's completely intentional. You don't want your students maybe seeing a particular week's folder when you're adding things to it. You don't want to potentially confuse them. There are a couple different ways of viewing things from the student's perspective. So if you can follow my cursor here, up at the top, above the main home page window, there is this edit mode button. This will get you maybe, you know, 75, 80% of the way there. So notice currently I'm on this home page. I have access to a bunch of different features here from an instructor's perspective. There's this uh, options menu icon. If I click that, I'm able to interact with the content on this home page as well as a few buttons up here above the main course menu. Notice that I even have access to a few things that we'll look at in a little bit, adding uh, different features to the course menu itself. There are options menus for all the different content items within the course menu. What happens if I toggle this edit mode button off? Let me just click that here to show you. So if I disable the edit mode, all of a sudden, I'm seeing things, again, maybe about 80% of the way that students see things too. It's a really quick way of gauging whether or not your students will be able to see content because sometimes you want to restrict what students see. Notice a few of these items too dropped out of the course menu. I no longer have access to those content areas that didn't have any content in them yet, which again helps kind of avoid confusion from your student's perspective. I also don't have access to my um, edit buttons anywhere around the interface. Some of those are gone. So that's one way of really quickly gauging things from that uh, perspective. Let me turn that back on. Let me show you one other way of getting a student preview. And this one actually is a full student preview. So up at the top, we have this edit mode button. We have a color picker to be able to change the different look and feel of your course, which can be a nice way of personalizing it for you instead of the standard uh, gray and red that uh, NIU gives to everyone. 
And then over here is the Enter Student Preview button. It's uh, gray. It's a little hard to see right away. It's only available for uh, instructors or course developers. Clicking this will then kind of convert our current account into a student account temporarily, and we can toggle back and forth between that. So let me start this. You'll notice that it changes. It lets me know that I'm entering student preview, and then it gives me a banner up at the top to be able to change back to the full instructor view. Now notice that even more of those uh, instructor features went away. I no longer have access to a lot of the other buttons that I had. I no longer have the uh, course menu bar underneath um, the course menu, which would allow me to interact with more of the uh, instructor features. Now I am seeing things exactly as students would see them. And if I had, for instance, a test or an assignment created here, I could actually take that as a student, preview all of that uh, on my own, make sure all of those are set up correctly exactly as I want them. OK, so that's one thing that's really handy that just became available after the recent upgrade. Let me toggle back to the instructor view. Notice I'm going to hover my mouse cursor over exit preview up at the top. Click that. And then it will ask me what I want to do with any data that I might have generated. If I did, in fact, take a test, maybe I want to leave that in the grade center temporarily uh, to be able to see what taking that test looks like. So I can keep it. I can delete it. Since I didn't do anything and I don't want to keep any of that data, I'm going to leave it on delete the preview user data and click continue. I notice a comment from my colleague Stephanie here. Loves the, the new student preview. Yeah, a much better view of what students can see. No longer do we have to request a student account, a fake student account, add that to our courses, and then log out and log back in on that student account. It's always available for us directly built into Blackboard. Very handy. Another kind of nice to have feature for people, you'll notice uh, occasionally around Blackboard are larger divider bars between different sections. You'll notice uh, when I hovered my mouse cursor between this course menu and the main content area, there is a bar that popped up here. And if I click this arrow, it resizes my content and gives me a larger view of the main panel there which can be very nice in a couple of instances when you want to see more of the content in your course. This is particularly useful for when you're grading assignments in the inline grading view, which we might be able to see later on. It just gives you more of a screen. Uh, you don't always need to be able to access the course menu here. And since it's easy just to click this arrow or click it again to expand it back and forth, uh, it's always available for you no matter what. It just gives you more real estate on the screen. All right. So those are a couple of things. One last uh, quality of life utility within Blackboard is up here at the top. If I click my name, I'll expand what's known as the global navigation menu. Once I do that, you'll notice that this gives me really quick access to a lot of other features within Blackboard, as well as the most recently visited uh, courses for myself. If you're working with, say, an old copy of a course and you're copying content from one to the next, which I'll cover later on, sometimes it's handy to be able to go back and forth really quickly. And clicking the global navigation menu here gives you very, very quick access to going back and forth between different courses, as well as a lot of other features. Uh, for instance, the course calendar, uh, something that's very handy. It shows all of the due dates attached to assignments, tests, and the like within your course. OK. So now let's get into uh, actually structuring our course. So based on what you are uh, thinking about for your own courses, you'll want to consider two different methods for adding structure to your content. It's always best to think about you know, chunking your content. Do you have, for instance, units of content? Maybe I'm teaching an economics course, and there are two main units of content within economics, a macroeconomics overview and a microeconomics overview. In that case, if I just have two main different content units, I might consider adding another couple of content areas within the course menu here. It doesn't expand it very far. 
and it gives students very quick access to that content. However, a lot of uh, instructors here on campus instead do weekly units of content. In that case, you might have 14, 15, 16 different units. And if that's the case, you may instead consider content folders, which we'll look at a little bit later on, and adding those to the content, content area. Apologies for all of the uh, confusing language too. If anyone has, if anyone gets confused by me constantly saying content in different ways, uh, I'll try to clarify a little bit better, uh, clear up some of the confusion. Blackboard reuses these uh, terms constantly. And you'll notice that uh, we've added a content area over here on the side and we've labeled it just generically content. We'll actually go over renaming some of these things too, perhaps to make them a little bit more meaningful to you and your students. So two different ways of structuring uh, your content within Blackboard is either adding new content areas. Uh, content areas are, for instance, information where you might consider adding your syllabus or the book that you'll use within your course. Content for your kind of weekly or unit content. Assessments. Uh, place to put your different assignments or tests, that kind of thing. And all of these are fully customizable. We'll look at changing them out in just a second uh, because sometimes you might not like the label that is given to you by default or you might want to tweak it in a certain way, again, to make it a little bit more meaningful to you and your students to reflect the kind of language that you'll use more often. Okay, so let's go over a few of those things that we might want to do to the course menu. So if you'll follow my mouse cursor up here to the top of the course menu, I showed it briefly earlier, but you'll notice that there is this plus button up at the top, right above that. And that gives us access to adding a few different things to the course menu, which you might want to add to your own. I can add another content area. I could add a link to another Blackboard tool that you might use very often. By default, uh, NIU makes available a few tools right off the bat, some of the more common ones. A uh, link to the discussion boards tool. For your students, a link to the My Grades tool. As well as this context tool. Uh, let me expand this one just to show you what this one looks like right here. Uh, this is a place where you might consider adding your own instructor information. Uh, if I had fully set this up, I could have a picture here. I could have my office phone number. I might have a description of myself that I add just to personalize the course. Some people use the context tool, some don't. That's perfectly fine, however you, uh, you decide to use it. If you do use it, however, you can delete that and we'll look at uh, deleting or renaming these different things in just a second. Other than that, uh, web links are very common. There may be a website that you consider using for your own courses, uh, some kind of resource out on the web, whether it's uh, some place to go for a research paper or it's a tool that you found online that your students might want to consider using for an assignment. Adding a link to a website out there is uh, very common, very simple, and again, since it's Available right here, always within the course menu. It gives your students very quick access to that feature. Okay, so let me go ahead and consider my first example. Let's say I'm teaching that economics course. And I, since I have two units, I think it would be very handy to add just another content area to the course menu here and rename this other one to reflect my design. So we already have content, I'd like to rename it. You've already seen uh, the options menu. Let me expand that again. And you'll notice as I hover over a lot of these different things within Blackboard, whenever you hover over uh, items, titles, you'll very often get this drop down menu. It's something to take note of. You'll notice that we had it on the home page. Uh, if I hover over my name here on the side, you'll again see it pop up here as well. Something just to take note of, whenever you want to edit an item within Blackboard, most often you'll be able to do so by hovering your mouse over the title of it and then clicking on this little drop down icon here. Okay, so let's say I want to rename content here to macro for macroeconomics. Once I uh, click on that drop down menu here, you'll see a bunch of different things that I can do with the different content items. I can rename this one. So I'll go ahead and click rename link that pops up a text editor and I'm going to rename content 
just to maybe unit one macro. And my students know that since this is an economics course, I'm talking about macroeconomics. I can either hit the enter button or, as I'll do right now, click the little save green check mark right there. And that'll instantaneously change the name of content to unit one macro. Okay, so now I've created my first unit. Let me go ahead and create the second content area and name that unit two micro. So again, up at the top above the course menu, hover my mouse button over that plus symbol, and then I'm going to click the content area link. All it needs is just a name, so I'll call it unit two micro, and then I can decide whether or not I want to make it available to users right away. Now I'm going to pretend here that since I'm just creating it, I don't want my students to see it because I'm going to be adding content and I don't want them to get confused by it. So I'll go ahead and make it unavailable right now and then make it available later on. So I just added the name, I'll click submit, and it'll add that second content area. And where does it add it except at the bottom of the course menu? Everything that you add will be added to the bottom, but you'll notice that when you hover your mouse over an item within the course menu, to the left of the title are these uh, up and down arrows. And when I place my mouse over those arrows, I can then hold my mouse button down and drag it up and down the menu here. And I just have to drag it up to where I want to place it unclick my mouse button there, it drops it, and now there it is. Okay, so let's assume I've gone through, I've added some of my content, now I want to make it available. You'll see there are a few different icons here. This gray box with an inner dotted border is to let you know that this uh, content area doesn't have content in it, so your students won't see it. Once it has any content in it, they would be able to see it, except this unit two also has a little box with a slash through it to let me as the instructor know that that's currently unavailable to my students. So let me click on the options menu here. After rename link is the show link uh, button. If I click that, it'll refresh the course menu and now that uh, icon is no longer there, letting me know that as soon as I put any content in it, of course, my students will be able to see it. Okay. So I've begun uh, adding my different items to my course menu here, structuring my course. Maybe I'm not going to use the discussion boards, so I don't want to confuse my students, so I'm just going to get rid of that link. And again, as we'd expect, if I want to edit anything with any of the links in the course menu here, I just need to click on the options menu. And you'll notice I could rename discussion boards if I wanted to. Instead of just discussions, I could call it discussion boards. I could call it uh, weekly discussions, anything like that. I could hide it from my students if maybe I'm considering using it later on in the course, but I haven't quite decided yet how I'm going to use it. Or if I know that I don't want it at all, I can go ahead and delete it, and I'll go ahead and do that. Notice that when it, I try to delete anything, it does ask me, do I actually want to delete it, yes or no? Uh, it gives me, again, the option to hide it if I want to do that instead. But I know that I want to uh, not use the discussion boards at all, so I'm just going to remove this link to that tool. So I'm going to click this delete content link. Yes, of course, I know that it'll actually permanently delete this link. Okay, go ahead and delete. Notice that it says it's going to delete a content area. It's not actually deleting any content here. It's just deleting this uh, link from the course menu, which can be a little confusing for people. So I'll go ahead and click delete. The page will refresh. And now, discussions is no longer available within my course menu as I intended. Okay. So those are a few things you might consider doing with your course menu. Again, this gives you and your students really quick access right to different places within your course, either content areas or different tools within your course. I could, if I wanted to, say, for instance, I was instead going to use a journal tool, uh, create a link to the journal tool. So I just have to hover my mouse cursor over the plus right above the course menu scroll down to tool link, click that, 
And now you'll notice not only do I have to give it a name, maybe I call this Reflection Journals, but then I click uh, which tool I want to add here. And I'll pop up that menu. I'll drop it down to Journals. I'll click Journals. Again, I decide whether or not I want to make this link available to my students so far. And I'll say that I've already uh, considered how I want to use it, so I'm just going to make it available right away. So I've given it a name. I've chosen the Journals tool correctly. All I have to do is click Submit. And again, it'll add it to the bottom of my course menu, and I can decide where I want to place it. Maybe, for instance, I want to place it where the discussion tool was. Again, giving students quick access to it and keeping the day-to-day uh, -day kinds of content chunked together. Uh, and then some of the more utilitarian tools below this divider. If you are creating larger menus, uh, this one's not too big, but if you did want to uh, keep different content kind of separate from each other, you can add your own dividers as well. You'll notice that there are a few different uh, tools here for um, making your course menu a little bit more structured itself. There are subheaders, which are basically just labels above different sections within your course menu, or there are dividing lines, they call dividers here, just like this one. All right. So let's say I've gone through and I've figured out how I want to structure my course, and I'm like, wait a minute. Within Unit 1 and Unit 2, that's going to be a lot of content. So maybe I want to begin structuring the content within those units as well. So let me go into one of these content areas, and I'll begin adding unit folders. Again, this is a different way of thinking about structuring your course. Since most people tend to use weekly units or, say, seven to eight or more units that wouldn't easily fit within the course menu here, you'll probably want to consider a unit content folders. So I've clicked on the Unit 1 macro content area, and here it brings me to my content canvas. I can add different content types, different assignments. I can add links to the different tools directly within this content area. I don't just have to add links in the course menu. I can add any of that here too, as well as most of my main content. So let me begin by adding a uh, content folder to this unit. Again, this might be how you want to structure your, your main top-level structure as well. Uh, maybe you have a unit folder for each week, so you might just call them week one, week two, followed by a descriptive name of what content your students will be able to find in there. So again, all I have to do is just click my mouse button over this Build Content button up at the top underneath my uh, content area title, and then scroll my mouse cursor over to this Content Folder button. And then I'll click that, and we can begin creating content folders. So within my Unit 1, I'll say that I'm going to start creating my Week 1 content. And I don't know enough about macroeconomics to uh, say exactly uh, what kinds of things you might study in an uh, overview of macroeconomics. But let's say I know I've heard of uh, John Maynard Keynes before, kind of a big name in macro. So maybe we'll talk about a little bit of the history of macroeconomics, and we'll look at some of uh, Keynes' contributions. So as with most things within Blackboard, I pretty much just need to give it a name. But I might also consider adding descriptive text to what students might find within this folder as well to give them some help to be able to find the content. Again, the more you, information you give your students within the Blackboard, uh, the fewer emails you're likely to receive. So I always think that it's a good idea to add uh, descriptive text to things like your structuring content to be able to help them find things easier. So maybe uh, we have uh, PowerPoint slides, say, uh, this folder contains this week's uh, lecture slides. Uh, please take quiz one. Letting my students know that, okay, they can find slides there, and there will also be a quiz posted later on. Uh, after adding some descriptive text, then there are what Blackboard calls the standard options, and they really are standard across almost everything within Blackboard. You get to decide whether your students can see the content here. And I do want to make this content available to 
my students right away, so I'll leave it on yes. Actually, let me backtrack. I'll show you what it looks like when it's set to no first. I can decide then whether or not I want to track uh, how often and when students are viewing my content. If that's something that you're concerned about, you can click yes, and then uh, Blackboard will log all of that information and make it available to you. I can also decide whether or not students will be able to see this uh, week's content after a particular date or only up until a particular date. This is something that's uh, fairly useful if you have a lot of uh, content available within Blackboard. Sometimes people only want their students to be able to go through, say, one or two weeks at a time. So you might make each week's content folder available, say, two weeks before the assignments are due, something like that. Give them access to it on a rolling basis so they're not overwhelmed um, or keep them on task a little bit easier. Do note that if you're using these date and time restrictions, these do not override the main uh, availability options up at the top. So if you click no and you also try to make it available after a certain date, the system will not use this after date to override the main no here, so that will always be unavailable. So if you do want to use the date and time restrictions, go ahead and add those in and leave permit users to view this content as yes. That way Blackboard will intelligently know, okay, users will be able to view this content, but only after or until particular times. So let me go ahead and put no here so that you can see what that looks like. So I've added my name, I've added some descriptive text, I've decided how my users, how my students can view this content, and then I'll click submit here at the bottom, and that'll add a content folder here for us. Okay, so here's what it looks like when something is not available to your students, and when uh, these viewing statistics have been enabled. The folder itself is grayed out, it's no longer a vibrant yellow, and it lets me know that this uh, content folder is currently not available. So if I re-enable that, let's take a look at what this looks like. You'll notice again, as with most things, if I place my mouse cursor over this particular item's title, a drop-down icon appears, and I can click that and get access to a number of different ways of editing this content. So I'll go back in and edit this folder and then re-enable the availability for it. A few other things to point out though, uh, very handy for you. If you have created uh, different weekly content folders, you can copy those. Or if you accidentally put it in the wrong unit uh, or a different content area, you can move that as well. Very handy. But let me go in and edit this to make it available. Okay. So I just click edit, it takes me back to my editing page. I can change the name again, change the uh, description again. And then I'll be able to permit users to view this content and then we can see what it looks like with the uh, display dates added in as well. So let me submit that. And there we go. Okay, so now it lets me know the item is currently not available, but it's not available because I have a date and, and or time restriction on it. So let me go back in and I'll make that fully available so you can see what that looks like too. All right, notice we have a question in our text chat here. When you copy, can you paste to your computer or only another part of Blackboard? That's a good question. There are ways of copying content down to your computer I don't believe this copy function does, but I can inspect that in just a second so we can look at that. However, re-enabling uh, this folder, you'll notice that it no longer tells me that it's unavailable and the content, is an, the content folder is a nice bright yellow. Ah, good. Stephanie says uh, she can answer that. Excellent. Love being able to uh, rely on everyone else's combined knowledge here. I see Stephanie is uh, typing in the text chat. I'll give her a moment. She says, using copy from the drop-down menu, which again, if I click on the options menu here, hovering over copy, you can copy it to another part of this Blackboard course or to any other Blackboard course you are teaching. 
which is very handy. So if you are, say, working in two different courses and you accidentally put some content in one, you can copy it over to the one you intended it to be in. Or if you have a uh, course from a previous semester, you'd be able to copy it from that one to this one. And we'll go over a uh, bulk copy too, uh, copying an entire course to an entire other course, but know that you can also copy granularly as well. You can target uh, content instead of having to copy everything over in one go. Okay, you're very welcome. And thank you, uh, Stephanie, as well, for being able to help out with some of these questions. Okay, so we've added uh, content areas within our course menu, see how we can do that to structure some of our course. Maybe that suffices for us. But sometimes if you have a lot of units or if you have just a few units, but you're able to chunk your content together uh, a little bit better within those larger units, using these content folders, you can then uh, make it a little bit more logical, structured for your students, make it a little bit more obvious where to go to find things for them. Okay, so what happens once I create these weekly content folders? So we have our unit one macro content area. We then have created a folder within that area. So what happens if I uh, click this week one content folder? So clicking that, you'll notice, ah, so yeah, once I've created my folder, I get access to all those same tools I had available to me when I was in my larger macro content area. I can add content. I could also add folders within folders. Of course, be wary about doing this because uh, it can make things a little bit harder to find. It can take a lot longer for your students to access stuff, but that is possible. But once I've created those uh, content folders, just like I would be able to within a content area, I could add files, I could add links to websites, I could add a, a YouTube video, all of these kinds of things I can do in a content area, I can also do within a folder as well as adding tests, surveys, links to the different tools, etc. Very handy. Okay, so let's say once I've created my folder here, I want to begin adding some basic help content for my students. So I might consider adding just a description of what they can find, not only to the folder itself, but maybe within the folder too. I could add an item, or if I wanted to post my PowerPoint files, I could post those, but let me add an item here too, quickly. You'll notice that once I uh, add or create an item here, I get all the same stuff I would for most other things within Blackboard. I have to give it a name, so maybe I want to call this uh, week one content, and then I'll post some descriptive text here. Text goes here. I might come back in and edit this later on to be more descriptive, but for right now, just know that you can add a, a description. And then I could attach a number of files. And unlike the file content, uh, with the item type of this content that we're currently working on, I can attach any number of files in a really simple list. So maybe I go and I want to add a um, number of different files. Maybe I have uh, multiple lectures that I'm giving and I want to add all of my PowerPoint files in one small list. I could do that here. Once I've done that, then I can uh, work with the standard options, decide whether or when my students can view that content. Once I'm done, then I can click Submit. And then it'll add a nice uh, bit of descriptive text, kind of as an overview to all the content within my folder. And then I can add the rest of my content here, too. All righty. So, uh, once you have added these, let's say we've gone through, we've added a number of folders, you've added your content to your folders. Let me go back to the main unit folder here, main unit content area. And uh, actually, let me go ahead and add one other folder so you can see what this looks like when we've gone through and we've added things and maybe you want to restructure things once some are added. So let me go ahead and add a second content folder here very quickly. This is my week two, and let's see, uh, maybe I'm talking about Friedman Hayek. I guess I know more about economics than I thought. <laughs> All right, 
and I've decided my students will be able to view it. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe I restrict it since this is the second week to that second week. Then I click Submit, and here we go. Okay. So I'm going in, I'm going through it, I'm building my course out, and uh, let's say I've been building it piecemeal as I think of things. Maybe not everything is in the proper order. Now here it is, since I've gone through and I began with week one, then I added week two, but they might not have started out that way. You know, I've gone through and I've added week one, week two, and I've uh, remembered, oh yeah, I've got all the files for week four, so maybe I add week four here, and then later on I go and I add week three and week five, etc. So if you're uh, doing that, you can easily reorder everything as you would with the uh, course menu, as we saw earlier. Again, when you add things to Blackboard, it adds them uh, one after the other, adding everything to the bottom of this list. But when you hover your mouse cursor over any item, you'll see, as we did in the course menu, this area off to the left of the title, the very far left of this particular item, is this yellow area which uh, has this up and down arrow, and when I click and hold my mouse cursor, allows me to drag and reorder all of these items. All right, so there we go. And once I've reordered things, it automatically takes effect. I don't have to click any uh, OK button. It's immediately reflected within your course structure here, and it takes effect, and your students can see that too. All right, so that's very handy. Uh, some things to think about covers kind of the main structuring of your content. And again, this, think about this in relation to uh, how you've structured things within your syllabus. Know that being able to reflect that structure that you've uh, previously thought of is possible in a couple of different ways. And you might think about chunking things in different ways. If you ever need any help with it, uh, feel free to contact me. I see we've got a com comment here in the text chat. Uh, let's see, if you are opening content up one week at a time, it can also be helpful to put your folders in reverse order so the current week is always at the top and easy for students to find. That's a great comment, Stephanie. Yes. So I added things in uh, standard chronological order where students would go through them one week at a time, but uh, if you're using just the standard content content area, again, I had relabeled that one to unit macro, and I might have 14 or 15 weeks. I might also add a few different files outside of the weekly content folders. That can begin to be kind of a jumble for my students. So maybe I want the most relevant things up at the top. I can then click and drag whichever week we're currently on up at the top. I could completely reverse chronologically order them up here. If I'm also using those date and time restrictions, maybe I reverse chronologically order them and add some availability date and time restrictions too so that they always see only the most recent content available for them here up at the top of this content area. So all these different kinds of uh, great tricks that are available for you within Blackboard to help your students access this content quickly and efficiently, help you avoid some of the issues that you might have uh, with them later on, avoiding a few emails. Okay, so that covers the main uh, course structuring uh, topics that I wanted to cover. A few other things that might be very handy for you, uh, I had previously uh, gotten rid of that discussion boards area and replaced it with a journal, but you might want to consider keeping that discussions area, if for nothing else, then maybe adding a uh, questions and answer or a help forum. So let me go in and I'm going to re-add that tool. Again, all I have to do to add something in the course menu is hovering my mouse cursor on the plus button above it. I'm going to scroll down to tool link here. And then I'm going to add a help forum link. And again, all I need to do is just give it a name. I then click on the drop down menu and select my discussion board. And I absolutely want to make this available to users, so I'll click the checkbox for that and then click submit. And again, it adds it at, at the bottom. I might want to add it a little bit higher, maybe right under grades. Uh, students can access to their grades and then can access some help. So let me go through, and I want to add a help forum. Forums are a great tool for you. Help forum is a great way of uh, allowing your students to post questions that the entire class might be able to answer. 
might save you a few extra emails, especially if uh, you are constantly getting the same questions from your students. You don't have to keep emailing them back um, the same answer, the same questions over and over. You, you would then want to let your students know that this help form is available for them if they have a question that they think the uh, rest of the class might uh, be interested in or be able to help them with, they could then add a question to this forum. So all you need to do then is just create a forum. So you just have to click the create forum button. And here I'm just going to call it the same thing, help forum. And I can give it some descriptive text, say if you have any questions, please post, post them here for the entire class. Okay, and I want to make it available. Now I can decide how students will see it. It's not going to be a graded for them. I just want them to post their questions. I'm going to allow subscriptions. I'll talk about this in a moment. So I'll just leave those the defaults and then I'll click submit. And now students, when they have a question, can click on the help forum link, can click into this help forum and then they can create threads for each of their questions. And then when they post a question, the rest of their class will be able to see that. They can re uh, refer to it if they have their own question to see, you know, maybe someone else has asked this within the course or maybe answer someone else's. That would be very helpful. Otherwise, as an instructor, I could subscribe to this forum. Then when a student uh, creates a new thread here, I would get an email. I could then answer the question within the forum and then hopefully the rest of the class would be able to benefit from my answer. So I'm going to click subscribe here so that I am subscribed to this forum and I'm receiving a notification whenever a student posts a new question. Okay, you'll notice that it's turned from a subscribe to an unsubscribe button and I get a little helpful success message here at the top. Excellent, okay. So I'll back out of that here. So that's one thing you might want to uh, think about within your own class. Uh, question from the audience here. Sorry, where is forum? Okay, so I went through that very quickly. Let me back up here and go back over that again. I had previously deleted the discussions link. So I went through and I added it again. But instead of um, calling it discussions, I just called it help forum. So that's a little confusing. Apologies for that. Once I then created the link to this discussion boards tool, I clicked that and it took me to this page here, uh, which is just currently labeled discussion board. I then uh, created a new form and I called that help form. And all you have to do is just click this create form button, give it a name, click submit, and now uh, it's then created here for you. Does that answer your question? Your students would then hopefully be able to uh, benefit from having that available in the course menu. And then they'd be able to post their questions. You'd be able to receive notifications to let uh, you know when they're there. And hopefully the entire class is a little bit more um, efficient that way. Your students are getting help when they need it. Um, you wouldn't have to then respond to the same email over and over again. It can save you a little bit of extra trouble down the road by setting that up beforehand. Okay. So that's one kind of nice thing that's available for you here. It's, it's a best practice that um, a few of us here like to do in our own courses. It saves us some time usually, so it's, it's nice. And it lets your students know that you're really uh, trying to help them out. Okay, so that's kind of one nice practice to consider in your own courses. Uh, one thing I want to cover, once you have gone through, you've structured your content, you've begun adding that to your course, don't forget, you have to make it available before your students can see it. And that's the course as a whole itself. We always try to cover this in Blackboard 1, but I want to cover it here too because it's just so important. So once you've gone through and you've added your content, you then want to make it available. And to be able to do so, it's kind of hidden here. You want to go down to customization within the course management control panel area. And within customization, once you've clicked that and expanded that area, you need to click properties. So let me click properties. Notice that you can rename your course. Currently, I'm in a generic uh, guest course that we use for our trainings here. I could rename that something else if I wanted. 
Uh, usually these are fairly descriptive titles that are given to you, but maybe you don't want uh, some of what they've given to you, you don't think it's necessarily helpful. Usually it gives you part of the uh, course's ID in it, which might not make sense to your students. You could rename it whatever you want. But below that is this set availability area on this page. And currently, uh, we have our guest course here set to available, but by default, when you have requested your course, the make course available option is set to no. That gives you the flexibility to begin uh, building your course out before your students can see it. Again, to kind of avoid confusion there, or maybe you add some things that you later remove from the course. It avoids some problems. But once you have gone through and you've gotten it uh, sufficient for your purposes, make sure that you click customization, properties, come to this page, and click yes for make course available. Once you've done that, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click Submit. It'll give you then a uh, nice, helpful success message up here at the top letting you know that it changed some of the settings for your course. You should then be able to uh, see if you were to go back to the main NIU Blackboard homepage that your course is no longer unavailable. It won't have that message. It won't be grayed out and italicized. It'll look normal. Okay, so once that's done, actually let's go ahead and inspect that really quickly. If I go back to the NIU uh, courses here, now I have a number of our guest courses that I'm enrolled in, so your, uh, your courses list will look fundamentally different from mine, but I no longer have uh, within the Blackboard guest course one, I guess which isn't on this page anyway, so ignore that. We'll just assume that guest course three was one here that unavailable message is no longer uh, next to the title. It's no longer unavailable. It is fully available. The link is clickable and for not only me, but my students. Okay, so let me go back to my guest course here. Finally, before we break, I also wanted to talk about uh, course copying because this is a feature that you'll want to consider if you're teaching the same course over and over again or this is a course that you've taken over from another uh, faculty member or instructor. Something that is very common to do is uh, reusing a lot of course content from a previous semester or a previous course. Or if you're teaching from two different sections and you want to keep them separate, uh, copying from one section once you've gotten all of your content as you would like it uh, to the new one so that you have it available. So underneath the course management control panel, we just looked at the customization properties page, but now let's look at the packages and utilities area, and I'd like to point out this course copy function. So under packages and utilities, once I've expanded that, I can click course copy here. That'll bring me to the course copy page. You can ignore the copy type up here at the top. You'll notice if I expand that, there's only one type anyway, so I'm not sure why that's there. But underneath it is what you uh, need to decide where you're going to copy it to and what you're going to copy. By default, um, the only thing you have to do is just click the uh, browse button to find the other course that you're going to copy to, unless you happen to know the course ID off the top of your head, in which case you could type that in. So let's say I want to copy from guest course one to guest course three. I'll just click this browse button. It'll pop up a box here. Let me resize this to make it a little bit easier to see. It'll pop up a box which will have all of my courses in it. I can then scroll down to the other course I want to copy to, click on that, and then I'll scroll down to the bottom of this very long list, which let me do that really quickly. It'll look a little funny on your pages. And then once I've scrolled down to the bottom, I just have to click the submit button, and then it'll fill in the ID of the course that I want to copy to. Again, course copy begins in the area that you're copying from, and then you specify which uh, course is the destination, the to course. Once I've done that, I can then decide uh, how much or which of my content I want to copy. I can click the select all button to select absolutely everything, which will copy all the content from the content areas, all of the assignments, all of the tests and quizzes, all that kind of stuff. Or maybe I only want to copy my main unit content. So I could just click those two units. If I happen to know that um, there may be weekly quizzes within them, I could copy those two content areas. 
and I could copy uh, the tests, surveys, and pools. Then that would copy the data and the uh, quizzes that my students can click on as well, which are known as the deployments. Question from uh, Erie here. If I'm taking over from another teacher, do they do this from their BB course, their Blackboard course, and my course is the destination? Yes, if uh, you're taking over from another teacher, you could have them run a course copy, and then you would have them do it from their own course to your course. However, uh, one or the other of you, whoever is doing this course copy, needs access to both courses to be able to do that. Just know that whoever is doing that needs access to both. So if you're taking over from another instructor, they could do it, but then you'll have to give them access to your course. Usually it's a little bit uh, more common for them to give you access to theirs, and then you can do the course copy yourself and decide what of their content you want to be able to copy over from theirs. Then once you're done and you've decided uh, which things you want to copy over, you can uh, just click Submit. And depending on how much content, uh, what kinds of content, if they have a lot of, say, videos, really large files, it can take anywhere from a few seconds if you're just copying um, maybe a syllabus to a few hours or a day if you're copying a lot of video content. But then once you've done that and you've submitted it, you'll get a notification. If I had clicked Submit, uh, I would have a notification up at the top here on my course that that has begun. And then, uh, once it is done, I will receive an email to my NIU uh, instructor email address, letting me know that that is fully done. I could then log back into Blackboard and inspect it and make sure everything is copied over correctly. I could then, for instance, use the student preview button to make sure that all the assignments that may have been copied over are still available to students, that kind of thing. Go through and make sure all of that is set up and correct and good to go for me. All right. Well, whew, thank you all for um, bearing with me here. It's a whirlwind of content to get through. I hopefully have given you a lot of ideas about uh, how to structure your own courses, a few of the other nice-to-haves within Blackboard. I noticed that it is 1 o'clock, so I am at my hours allotted time. But I'd like to open it up to you all. If you have any other questions here, I'd love to be able to answer those right now. And since I'm still in Blackboard, I can show you maybe where to go to be able to find these within your own courses. So do any of you have any questions for me? I notice uh, one person is uh, typing in the text chat. Uh, let's see, one more. Can you quickly review how to embed a YouTube video in a content folder? Having trouble. OK, so this is one thing that recently changed. And unfortunately, it's not something that's terribly easy. So let's say I went into my unit one here, and I went into the week that I wanted to add this YouTube video for. So normally, when this is working, and this will be working again, we're told that Blackboard is working on the issue, I would go to Build Content. I would scroll over to YouTube Video. Let me click this and show you how it should be working. Normally, I'd be able to search for a video. So let's say I want to look for a, a video on blended learning. I type that in the search box. I can decide which language I want to search in, and then I click the Go button. Normally, it would add a list of all the different videos here. I could select the one I want to add, and I'd be good to go. Unfortunately, um, there is currently, uh, and I see Stephanie's helping me answer this. Yeah, there's, there's a problem with the YouTube video mashup. They hope to have it fixed soon. Uh, it's not available currently, but we do have a workaround and some um, tips for you all here on our Blackboard site. So let me go to that. And all I did was just go to niu.edu slash Blackboard. And that will take you to the Teaching with Blackboard uh, help website here. Currently, since this is a known issue within Blackboard, we have posted a notice about it in the known issues area. So you'll notice in the uh, menu here, there's a link to known issues. I'll click that. And this was the most recent issue that we've come across. So here are the instructions for actually adding a uh, YouTube mashup within your course. And there are a couple of workarounds that we've found. If it's sufficient just to add a web link, you could do that. So let me go back to Blackboard here. If adding a link is all you really need within that folder, let me go back to the unit folder here, or just the content area itself. And you could go up to Build Content 
and add a link to that uh, YouTube video. Maybe uh, you just want to add a couple of links for the first few weeks here while Blackboard's working on fixing that, and then you can go in and hope to add the YouTube videos later. So I could just click web link. I could give it a name, say blended learning video. And then I could search uh, YouTube. Let me bring up YouTube. Find a video on blended learning. This basics of blended learning one looks good, so I'll click on this one and I'll stop it before it can begin playing and annoying all of us. And then I could copy this URL up at the top in the URL bar. Right click, copy, and then come back to Blackboard. Uh, click on the URL box here. Right click and paste that in. And that might be sufficient for my purposes right now. Otherwise, if you do in fact want to embed the video, uh, you can do so, but it'll require a little bit of extra work. Uh, placing links in there is nice and quick. Uh, with YouTube videos, however, we have step-by-step -step instructions to be able to do this. You'll go to YouTube, click the Share button, and then the Embed tab. So let me show you where to go here. So I'll go back to YouTube. Share button. Where is this Share button? There it is, underneath the video title here. I can click Share. It'll pop a, a box underneath that. You'll notice that there's a link to be able to share it quickly, but then there's a second tab here with the embed code. And then here's a uh, snippet of HTML code. This is what you would need to paste into your uh, class to be able uh, into uh, the video there to be able to display it to your students. So I can right click and copy. And I can begin going through uh, the different steps here to be able to embed that within my class. Okay. So hopefully that helps you here. So copy the embed code, place it in the text editor. So then I go back to Blackboard and instead of using this web link here, I can go up and I could probably post any kind of item, I would imagine, anything with a text editor, hopefully. Let me try the item here. Since I have access to the full text editor, now I'd be tempted again to use the mashup tool, but I'll run into the same issues. So instead I could give it a uh, title, blended learning, blended learning title, blended learning video. And then within the text editor itself, you'll see off to the far right is this HTML button. I can then click that and then paste my embed code from uh, YouTube, paste that in there, click the update button, and you'll notice it seems to have added some kind of video content. Now just within a text editor it doesn't display everything, but if I click this submit button, I should then have my YouTube video added. Again, this is a little bit cumbersome, but it's not that much more work than you go to by searching uh, videos through the YouTube mashup tool. And it's pretty simple, it's pretty quick and easy once you get used to it. I see Stephanie said, uh, let's see, she would recommend using the URL under the share below the video because the URL in the address bar is sometimes a temporary link. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't know that. So if you're going to copy the web link, instead of using the URL up here, uh, click the share button and then click this link down here. So that's good to know. And the process for embedding YouTube video by using the HTML button is actually a great process to know since you can also embed other types of Web 2.0 embeddable content as well. Uh, probably extend to tweets on Twitter, stuff like that as well. Uh, Vimeo, you, Vimeo uh, videos, a lot of other places around the web have you know, embeddable content. Pinterest pins, who knows? The sky is the limit. Anyway, hopefully that answers that question for you. That's, it's a workaround. It's a work in progress. Hopefully Blackboard will get this fixed soon. Uh, and then you won't have to go to YouTube and back to Blackboard. But at least it is currently possible. All right. Any other questions? Well, I'm not seeing any other questions here. So thank you all for joining me today. Let me go back to uh, Blackboard, or uh, Blackboard Collaborate itself, stop this app share.
back to the whiteboard here. All right. So thank you all again for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, if you're looking for other of our workshops, you can always go to our department website at niu.edu slash facdev, F-A-C-D-E-V. And since I'm recording this, I'll make this uh, program archive available later on. Blackboard Collaborate is able to record things. And I'm able to then save a video down and post it, and I'll do so later on. Uh, since it's Friday, it'll probably be Monday or Tuesday that I am able to get to that. But then I'll follow up later on with a uh, video link for you if you want to review this later on. Uh, we are on Facebook and Twitter. If you feel like following us, please go ahead and do so. We do post uh, interesting content for uh, instructional faculty and staff here at NIU, things that are relevant both to uh, campus life as well as teaching, teaching with technology, all that kind of stuff. Again, one last time, thank you so much for joining me here today and for holding on a few minutes after uh, 1 p.m. Uh, you can contact me either on my email here or my, uh, directly on my phone line. And I'd love to help you with any other Blackboard questions you have or just teaching with technology questions in general. And if you're so inclined, feel free to uh, follow me on Twitter. I love following other people here on campus. Uh, it just creates a greater sense of community. Okay. Thank you all again. Have a great day.